Hello, hello. I was going to say good morning, but I guess it's good afternoon. So good afternoon. Welcome to Yarn Lane. Sorry for the longer break, but we've had to put up some contraptions. We had Elliot climbing on the desk, and then, of course, we have to sterilise them afterwards. Uh, not because of him being bad or anything. But this hour, we have got the lovely Kerry Gardner joining us. No relation. Unfortunately, we are going to learn to weave. I just was so excited about this. If you want to get involved, please do Facebook Live. I've got Facebook Live here. Um, you can also email or you can call the call centre if you want to buy something and these kits are already selling. But email us or message us studio at yarnlane.com or of course you can go to the website um, which is www.yarnlane.com click watch live and then you can then scroll down and we've just got four kits, four very beautiful kits, all from Wool Couture and they're called Contemporary Craft and they certainly are, they're really fabulous and they are already selling so we do need to crack on with this. Now we're going to start with the large we weaving loom. This is how it comes in this beautiful box and you open up the box now on this one, because it's large and the loom is larger than the box, you have to put the loom together. Is it easy to put together, Callie? Yeah. That's like that. You've got the loom there. You've got all of the yarns you're going to need to create the design. And this is the string that you make the warp or the weft. Warp. The warp. Left go weft, weft is goes left. left. Yes. yes. That's how so I remember So you put it. the warp <laughs> on there and then you've got... Um, your weaving cone, comb. that's to yeah. hold it all mm -hmm. down, isn't it? it? Is, put it yeah. all down. Have I got a, I haven't got a weaving needle in this one. Perhaps you don't need one. With the large ones, you do get, I'll, sh I'll show you, I've got a box over here, okay. so I'll show you what it's with. You do get a large, oh, do you know why? It's because it's in with the um, with the bits that you make your loom with. Oh, it's, it's, in all, with it's in tucked in here, yeah. so I won't, but, but you do frame. get it, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get everything you need to have a go with this. This is really good, everything. And of course, you also get the instructions on how to do it all. I think this is so much fun, I really do. Don't be daunted because it's large. Now the size of large, have you got your large one there? Mm -hmm. Please. So this is that's the size. It's not huge. That's that's it with no no warp. I'm going to show you that. That's the size that you yeah. that you're getting in with this one. It's so about this is 30. It's about 30. About 30. By, does, it, does it say? It's kind of a ruler length. No. Oh, it does this at yeah. 28 by 30. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, so 28, 28 by 39. Yeah, 30. That's what it is. So that's what you get in there. Now, we also have, oh, I think, I'm not sure which of these two are my favourites. We know. also have this one, macrame weave. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? And what you get in here is everything except the wood. So you have to, you'll have to go... I going to have to go foraging in the forest or the beach but a to get your piece do. of wood. Broom or a broom handle. Yeah. I like the way it's bendy though. I just like it that. Really it yeah. gives it more rustic. But yes, you provide your own wood. But what you do get is, so this is the macrame. Do you call it rope or string? Uh, rope. Yeah, so it's macrame rope. rope. Yeah. And then you get the beautiful walls. And then you also, of course, you get the instructions. So it's how to macrame. It's going to tell you everything you need. You've got your needle, and this is, again, you've got lots of instructions here on how to put this together. Very, very clear instructions, and you get your hook. Now, this you need this to hang your to do your macrame from, mm -hmm. don't you? That's what you do with that. And then you've got the brown beads, or sort of the wooden beads, if you want to add the beads, as they have done here. Isn't that beautiful? So this is what you can make, is the one that's actually behind... Oh, it's all on the screen. It's on the screen. That's what you can make with that one. It is, it is so lovely. I love that. That's $29.99. And of course, you can use the loom again and again and again and again, can't you? Can. you? So you've just got everything to get you going once, and then you can use the loom again. Now, we also have a small weaving kit. Now, this one is with the blues. So this is the blues one. This is called Ocean. And what we have in this one, so this is your small weaving kit. So you can see this is already made up. It's quite a sweet one. 
16 by 21 centimetres. Again, it has the instructions in there, or tape down in there. It has the cord that you create the walk with. It has your needle and your um, comb. comb. Mm -hmm. Do you call it a comb? To yeah, bridge you do. it down. Absolutely. You do. it comb. And of course, it has all the yarns. And it's to create the same picture that's on the box. So it's very much what you get is what's on the box. This is what you get. So that's really lovely. All of these are suitable for beginners, which I think makes them perfect. So this is the small one. And then we also have the same small weaving kit, but this time we've got these beautiful calm colours. So this is really lovely. So again, if I just open up the box, we have got the warp cord. We've got all of the yarns in these beautiful colours. And they feel so soft. Even through this, they feel really soft. And then we have the instructions, the comb, the pushy down thing. What's that? <laughs> well, you can use it as a shed, which I'll talk about in a little okay, bit. But brilliant. it is to hang it on as well. When oh, you, okay. When you're finished, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the needle. So you've got everything you need to get going and to make this particular one. And then, of course, all of this sort of wooden bits and the instructions you can use again and you can use other yarns and do other things to do your weaving. I just think this looks so amazing. I love the fact it's got different depths, etc. We really are so excited because they are absolutely fantastic. First time we've done these on Yarn Lane and it's a bit different, isn't it? It's really lovely. Now we've got the brilliant Carrie Gardner to, to show us how Thank to do you. all this. Thank you. Ready so to work on a hook. So which one are you going to show us first, Carrie? I'm going to show you the small one first because um, if you are a little bit feeling a little bit daunted, then perhaps that one might be suitable. But to be honest, all of the techniques that I'll show you are then transferable to the larger one and to the macrame and weave one. So it, it's just the just what you want to go for, really. And the, and the colours are really beautiful. And the reason that they're so soft is because it's 100% merino. So we've got two types of yarn in here, two kind of styles of yarn. We've got, just open up my kit, you've got your normal kind of yarn here that we're going to use to do our weaving with. And we've also got what we call roving. Now this is what, um, what it would look like before it's been spun. So this is what gives it that lovely texture and you were saying with the different depths yes. and everything. Really lovely. And, um, and you're able to create those by, you know, by pulling out stitches. I'm going to show you that. And I always call it stitches. It's not stitches at all, is it? Pulling out your weaving and by, um, by doing slightly different techniques. So I'm going to show you a few techniques. This is the ocean um, colours. I'm going to show you from sort of from sort of from the beginning. I'm going to show you from the very beginning on the larger one because it's easier to see perhaps on that one. So this is you get 20 grams of this cotton um, cord, and this is for making your warp. We're going to we're going to help each other out with that, right? If we get that yes. on, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure at some point I'm also going to say womb rather than <laughs> loom because that's just how it is. So when you set up. All you're doing is tying a little knot here at the top. Can just you just show go that. to the left a little there bit? There we That's go. Brilliant. Sorry. Thank you. There we go. I've just tied a little knot here to attach it, and then we just use these lovely handy teeth to attach. So we go. So we go around like so. Bring it round again, and down, and around the tooth at the bottom, and up. And that's all there is to it. And as I say, I'm going to show you how to start it on the bigger one. I thought that this one, we could just have a little, a little demo and then I'm going to snip it there. Let's move that just out of the way. And then at the back here, all I'm going to do is just tie a knot. I'm going to take that through all the way around, take it down to the end, all the way around, and then I'm just going to tie a knot. And that creates your warp. And then you're ready to get going. And you can also, if you want to, if you notice that they're looking like they've gone a bit high, you can pull them down just like that. So let's just tie a little knot here. I haven't, I, I broke my thumbnail and it's really tricky to, <laughs> finding it really tricky to, to tie a knot. And there we are. How we get right. used to nails, don't we? Mine yeah, terrible yeah, I know. Right, so there we go. I'm just going to chop that off there. So then you would start. Now you've got pictures in on top on the front of the box and you've also got your instructions here. 
there is no right or wrong way or you know whatever design you want to do is, is entirely up to you. You can have a look at the designs that they've got inside and kind of decide for yourself really. You've got these beautiful coordinated colours um, in ocean. We've got a cream, a lovely teal and this navy blue and then we've got the roving in cream as well. So I, you can look at these beautiful, how gorgeous is that? It is lovely. Isn't, isn't it lovely? You're not going to lose that on the floor. It's so nice. All of this has been um, laser cut. It's from um, Forestry Commission um, approved um, woods and it's all laser cut in Yorkshire at the Walkerture Studios. So all of these beautiful tools that you're given, this lovely comb, they're just so, they're so pleasing, aren't they? They're really lovely. Now I'm going to just start with the very basic weave. Right, a little bit of roving here has been rattling around in the box and has got a little knot on the ends there. So I might just trim it off actually. There we go. So the, in the instructions, it advises you to perhaps start with about a metre and a half. And you can just do that by, by if you just stretch your arms out, that's about a metre, maybe a little bit more, depending on how long your arms are. <laughs> so we're going Don't to- you know that that span there from tip to tip is the same as your height? Is that right? Yeah. That's like fun Isn't there fact, something isn't also it? about from here, from your wrist to your elbows, the size of your foot? Yes. I don't, I don't know. Pretty sure I learned that from Pretty Woman, but you know, in the 80s. 90s whenever so um so with people will probably remember weaving when they were younger perhaps at school and it is just in out in out is the very basic we can create different textures by coming in and out of slight a couple of different you know more warp threads um, and we can also then i'll show you the with the um, roving how that's going to look so i'm just going to pick up and with this small one it's really easy and that's why you've got this lovely chunky needle as well to help you to pull it through like Oh, you go so. all the way through across? Yep, go all the way through across and then you can just pull it through. Now on this first one, when you start the first one, it's going to want to travel down a bit. So we just need to guide it through. We don't want it to go all the way down to the bottom because if you've seen the pictures, as you can see there on the screen, the picture with the tassels, we can add tassels later. You can add them at the beginning, but I find if you add the tassels after you've done a bit, even just half of your weaving, if you then add your tassels, it's easier. If you add your tassels at the beginning, what I find is that it moves your, your warp um, threads a little bit out of, of sync and it, it's a bit harder to get to get the needle okay. through so I would recommend doing a little bit of weaving and then perhaps um, doing your um, tassels if you want them you don't have to have them it's entirely your choice and then um, you could finish off or you could finish the whole thing and then add some later um, the great thing with this one also this kit also is that you've got your little your little thing to hang it on so you can um, once you've I'll, I'll talk at late, a, a little bit later about how we then un attach, um, so we detach this from the frame and then we can loop it over this and then they've got little holes here, you can see the little holes, to make your hanger. So it can go wherever you like and it's really rather pretty. But you can also use this, it's really a um, handy tool. You can also use this as what's called a shed. I have no idea why it's called a shed. <laughs> who, who knows, an American term perhaps. But you can use this if you want to to, you would tuck it under, just like I was doing with the needle, guide it through, and then I'm not gonna do it all the way across because I want to do another couple of rows of this and I'm gonna show you how to use this with the roving. But then if you turn it slightly, it really opens up that weave for you and that is how you can put your roving through. So I'm just gonna do a couple more. So you're going through every other one? Going through every other one. And as I'm coming back on myself, I'm doing it the other way around, yes. the alternate way. So there we go, just through. I found myself the other evening, as I so often do with, when I'm trying out these wonderful kits, just getting really, really into it, really mesmerized by what can I do with this? What colors can I, can I experiment with? Shall I go all the way across with this color or shall I go maybe halfway and then meet it up with another color? And yeah, th what, whatever you want to do is totally fine. There's no right or wrong, which is why it's such a great beginner 
I think craft. it's fabulous. So just you know, on that, because we're talking from a beginner's point mm. of view, mm -hmm. um, do you have to worry about the tension on your warp threads? The tension on your warp threads? Um, yes, yes you do. Um, but it's not that it's a tricky thing. It's not like it's something that you're going to have to practice as you're pulling down. You'll kind of know, you don't, it's, <laughs> It's, uh, you don't want it to be so tight that you're, they're going to snap. You need to give a little bit. You've got to have a little bit of give so that your, um, your weaving can go in amongst um, the warp threads. But, um, but it's, you'll just, you actually will get, I didn't have to practice. I got a feel for it almost immediately. You'll know if you're pulling too hard. But that said, this, this cotton is very strong. Yes. It's You've very, got very loads strong. there, so you obviously you, you can absolutely do lots do. and lots of these. Yeah, you? you really do. You, like you were saying, you, you've got your loom, you've got the, the yarn, the beautiful merino yarn, and you've got this core, uh, this um, cotton. You could put, I think, I mean, I'm, I'll show you in a moment, I'm almost finished one of these. I think you could probably make a couple for, with just the equipment that you've got right here. You'd obviously have to get something different to hang it on, but um, you could absolutely make a couple with this, or even just use some yarn that you've got at home. Yes, that indeed. would be absolutely yes. fine. Mix yeah. any, any bits of balls that you've got left, you exactly. could use, couldn't you? Yeah, exactly. And using all of the, lots of different ones as well, once you've, once you've completed this one, using different um, textures, different thicknesses, will give you the interest that this has given you with the, um, the roving and the, the yarn as well. So I'm completely in love with these. They're just lovely. One thing to say, you were talking about tension. Don't, at this point, pull so hard can you see how that's yes. pulling across there we don't want to do that you want to just there's no you don't have to be you don't have to be tight with it you can it's quite forgiving as well though you can just pull it back like that and as you saw me earlier just using the comb to to push it down and you can make it really beautiful texture so I'm going to show you now just with the roving now with roving, if you pull it like this, you're not going to be able to break it. This is, these are the raw fibres before they're spun. They're really quite strong. However, if you give yourself a little bit, if you, if you perhaps pull from here, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to break it, but if it comes in a longer piece, if you give yourself a little bit further, put your hands a bit further out and then pull, because the fibres are only so much, so, you know, so long, it will then come apart. But what I have done, is to separate it like so it kind of comes this is I haven't used this one yet so you can see here this is how it comes so if you want to perhaps make it a little thinner you can just pull from here and you can separate it like so and decide what kind of thickness you want to have that roving so I'm now going to use this as a shed um, you could also just use a pencil or a chopstick even just something that's got that you can turn and give a little bit yes. of a you know um, gap with the roving I'm not going to go one one in one out I'm going to go one over sorry one over hang on there we go. I'm going to go over two under one and over two because then I can get that lovely texture and also because the roving is thicker it's not going to like going under just one it will but it doesn't give you that beautiful texture so there we go I've got it there I'm just going to turn it slightly because we can't thread this this is really handy having this space here because what we need to do is just thread it through with our fingers like so it's going to thread it through like that take it all the way across now uh, you can if you want to cut this off but but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it so I'm going to give myself enough either side that what I can then do is just pull like this and this is what's giving us that beautiful bobbly texture that you were admiring earlier Wendy there we go always leave yourself around 10 centimeters if you can I have not left 10 centimeters there you can see that but anyway because what we're going to do after you finish you will weave you'll weave those in or sew them in using your needle so can you see I'm just playing with it really just moving the roving at this point it doesn't matter you can still kind of move it around to the right as you wish there we go and then I'm going to take the shed out and then I'm going to just gently push it down I don't want to push it down too much I don't I love I like that texture I like how that looks 
with those bubbles. It's like you've got a sheep hiding in your weaving there. Very pretty. So then you can just choose another colour and we can again measure it out unwind it's so soft it's lovely it is lovely it's, and it's soft so, isn't it it's really? so beautiful yeah and it's also really durable because it's 100 percent merino it's really durable and you're not going to have any worries about i'm going to um, be interested how you thread this needle it's, it's quite forgiving it's got quite a large <laughs> quite a large eye so all i'm doing is i'm squashing can you see i'm just squeezing it try and make a little you're not going to be able to make a point but just squeeze it and push it and there you go Oh, nice and simple. Yeah, it is. And lovely and forgiving that they've given you this beautiful wooden needle here. So again, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm perhaps going to go, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to, I need to go under that one. I'm going to go like so. Just so that it's alternate to that one underneath. And just looks so pretty. I'll show you the other colour in a moment. Let's just do this one on here. This navy is gorgeous, isn't it? it and you is. can decide what. Um, I was trying to think what what um, what colour what colour tassels would I put on here, but well, I, that's the thing about putting them on later. I suppose yeah, you can make that decision. You can decide, after. yeah, because if you want to start with this colour, you know, you could have tassels that that match, couldn't you? But you might want to have a contrasting colour and. There we go. So I'm just, I'm just doing alternate things. I'm not really, I haven't necessarily got a plan. And you know, like you were saying with Catherine earlier about the mindfulness in your sewing and your and your your crafting, it's so lovely, just and quite freeing to just think, okay, I haven't got to follow a pattern necessarily, and I can just create. And if you don't quite like it, well, go back through and undo it and try again and do Which something quite a bit easy different. To do. But I mean, there is, it, on the instructions, does it, does it have, you could follow this religiously, does it do that? Or is it telling you to do it it's randomly? What the instructions I don't want to do, open them in there because they're tucked behind. I, yeah, it's OK. Something. I've got my, my instructions right here. I'll just put them forward a bit. So here you've got all the instructions, just like I showed you earlier, about tying the little knot around the frame and then creating your warp. And it gives you a little bit of um, information and advice about how that um, you know, how, how tight you need to do that. And then the next one, just going through the real basics of how to do your weaving using your comb and then sewing in as well. So you can sew in your, your um, ends and all you're doing is basically weaving through the back just to secure them. And then we've got, you've got information about the roving here. They've used a pencil or a pen here to pull out, but you saw it was just as easy mm, just to pull it out with shed. your fingers. Yeah, using your shed. Um, goodness knows why it's called that. And then it's also on the back pages here got um, information about what to do, how to, um, how, to, how to tie it off. And it's really simple because all you do is you just take, snip them off, tie a knot, and then you use your needle or, a, or just a darning needle to thread all the way through there you go, look, we can, you can see on the back here. So here's your, here's your stick and you're just picking up stitches and going around and going around and really, really simple. Um, I've got one here that you can see. I'll put this one to one side. So if you want to have side. a go at this, can I just say this, because I don't mm. want people to miss mm. out on this. If you want to have a go at this, um, do just have a look. These small looms are really cute, aren't they? Mm. The colours that Carrie's working is called Ocean. Um, it's $24.99 for that whole kit and the other version is Calm which is in the sort of pinks. Yeah. So this is the Ocean and then if I just bring in Calm, I like the idea of this, I like Calm, Calm Ocean. And there's the, that's it, there's the Calm. So this is, this is really beautiful. So it's really lovely and plenty to do more and more and more mm -hmm. on there. So but what you're doing, what we haven't got is a rigid pattern to follow. No. You do it the way you want to, adding it as you go. Very mindful, very lovely. So that's these two. So here's a, um, a finished, almost finished um, example of, um, of Calm. It needs, needs a little bit of trimming, but that's something that you can do once you're you know, once you're there. I'm going to show you this stitch here. Look at this beautiful plait. Isn't that lovely? It's not stitches, it's a weave. I'm such a knitter. Anyway, <laughs> um, 
So you've started taking it off? This has yeah, been started to take off. So you can see here how we would just snip. I don't want to snip that bit. We would just take this off here, snip it, knot it. Ah, oh, right. You're not trying to take them off as no, loops? No, 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 no. Just taking it off and knotting it like that. And then what we would do is use the, use the cotton to to get a, you'd probably need a darning needle. I'm just going to do one more in there. And those can all be taken to the back, so you're not going to see them, that's fine. And we can snip those off. So what you would then do is get a darning needle and just go through picking up the, the weave at the top there, going through and looping over whatever you wanted to. Because of course, if you've used your, um, your little shed stick, we're calling it already then you would need another little stick it's quite cute I, I when I go out with my children they're for, I get a bundle of sticks with me on every walk we go out for so you could use something like that how sweet would that be that you could use something from from a walk with your children perhaps or just whatever you find in your garden or you could just use a bit of dowling even really really simple to get um, anywhere and um, and you could make you could make these for the wall in any room. You could give them as gifts. I think they'd make a really lovely gift, actually. They do, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, the, that's calm. And you can see I've got here, again, in the kit, you can see a little bit further here. I've got a bit further with this one. And you can see also how we've added, I've added a little corner. So that is just taking my weaving to a certain point and then just just coming back and forward and then just filling in oh I see just filling in with another right. color so you're not sort of stopping at that adding the other color no Add no thank you yeah going all the way across and then and then filling in another color so those are those are the small ones and that as I say is that's in calm um, and and you can see I've used quite a large bit of roving um, in that one um, and I think it looks really cute um, and then I could add my, um, my tassels at the bottom. And the way that you would add your tassels, I'm going to show you on... There's the one that I had. I'm sure I picked up some. I did. Here we go. So, so now that this one's got a bit more on it, it's a bit easier. So all I've done is I've just measured out some bits of, um, some bits of my yarn. And take the needle and... You can thread it. If you've got more than two, I would suggest just using your fingers. In fact, I don't even know if this two is going to go through. I have done this before. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them under two, like so. Just under two. Now we need to draw, draw it through. I don't want to draw it all the way through, though. Take your needle off at that point. And then what we're going to use the needle to do is to pick it up here. You can use your fingers as well. Just pick it up here like so and then we are going to put the ends through like that and then you just very gently because we don't want to pull it all out of shape very gently tighten it up and there you go there is your tassel and you can move that up to your weaving so that it meets up there there you go there's one tassel it's not the neatest tassel because I've done it really quickly, but there's the tassel there. And then you can trim it if you want to. You can trim it if you want to. You can see my, the ends aren't quite, um, as you've been pulling it through, the ends aren't quite the same. So you could just give it a little haircut, as we've all needed recently, and there it is. So we can just put um, let's put some more tassels across there. And, um, and I, I mean, I might be inclined, perhaps with the calm, to perhaps pick out and do a little sequence of the three colours. I think that might be quite cute. The tassels, yeah. yes. They'd like, look quite cute. Should we move on? Are you all right if I move on to the large one? Should we do that? Yes, because this is the one I want, want to get. Yeah. So, yes. so, so I'm going to show you from the very beginning again, because I didn't, I, I was sneaky and I'd done most of the small one. But then we can show you with this one. Here's one that I have started on, which I'm really rather pleased with. It's looking really gorgeous with all those different textures. That's that little plait stitch. Oh, there, there it is, the brown one. It's called a sumac stitch. And I'll show you that again with my stitches. It's a sumac weave um, and it just creates this beautiful plait uh, there. So you can see I've also just added 
a little bit there. This is a time to get creative, isn't it? It really is. It really is. You just, you will, you'll be so surprised how you just lose yourself in thinking, oh, I'm going to add this here and then I'm going to add that there. And it's just, there is no wrong. There's no wrong, there's no right, but it's right for you. You know, all those colours look so lovely. This is millennial in the, um, in the large one in the large loom so when you get your kit as wendy showed you you get your kit and it's and the loom um pieces and your needle because i'm going to show you that if you thought the other needle was impressive let me show okay. you this one. Oh my goodness <laughs> i was going to say to you actually because because you can you imagine using that little one you'd you'd be there for some time wouldn't you but look we've got a lovely a lovely big needle and do you know I would this is just so pretty after you've finished or you know if you've decided you'd you'd made enough of your loom I'd be so tempted to I don't know put this on display so I don't know how but it's so lovely so you get your loom is it comes in the pieces um, and then it's just got these really simple can I shoot there it's really simple all you need is a flathead screwdriver um, so it'll cut you open it all out the pieces will be flat together because they're all uh, so they can all fit in your box you just open all the screws up, put the screws together, and that's it. Just um, just a few screws, eight screws there, and you've got this large loom. Um, and you get a comb as well. Get a comb as well there. So, and you also get a larger piece that you can use to hang up your, um, your weaving with. I'm gonna show you, what I wanted to show you was from the very beginning just doing to, just to show you how easy it is to sort out your your warp it's super easy and nothing to be daunted about whatsoever so I'm going to start down here and I'm just going to do a knot with it create a knot like so no fancy knots just a normal knot there we go and then we take it up and around and we bring it down and around and up and around the teeth like so and you'll be able to tell you'll kind of get in a rhythm and you'll be able to tell if one's a bit too loose or it's too tight and you can just go back and tighten it up and that's how that goes there we go and you would just keep going and if you if it turns out that you haven't got that you haven't got enough like I haven't got enough I'm just going to I thought I had I thought I had cut myself off way more than that anyway <laughs> never mind but it gives us a good, gives good lesson you a, here yeah so you can just tie that off and you can keep going I mean the other thing you can do is you can just tie this on and then you could just use this and go around yes. with the ball yeah, just as easy just as easy yeah to do yeah. that because you're not so, going over and over, you're just going round the coming, front all the time, aren't you? Yeah, you're going round and up and over, yeah. and round and up and over. A bit like over. the sewing machine hook. So what I want to show you is how this, there we go, I've threaded this. So we've got this lovely, I've done a lovely design. And as I say, I've just, with this one here, it's just a normal um, piece of this, the piece of the yarn, rather than using roving. I've just used the yarn and I've just pulled it out. It's just a textured stitch and it shows you how to do that in the instructions. So we've got the normal weave here, we've got the beautiful roving. I've just, I've gone through a diff few different, um, you know, slightly different weave there. <clears throat> and then I've gone, again, textured. And this lovely sumac stitch, <clears throat> which is what I'm gonna show you now. So here is my, I mean, it's pretty easy to thread this one. I don't think you could, you know, <laughs> you couldn't really go wrong with this one, could you? Even I don't need my glasses. <laughs> You'd be all right with that one. <laughs> so there we go. So what we're going to do, actually, do you know what? I think I'm going to start at the other side. I'm going to end this bit. I want to end that there. And I'm going to start at the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and that your beginning for this is a bit, it's not tricky, but you just have to, oh, you just have to secure your thread. So I'm going to bring, I'm trying to show you, it's quite large. I'm going to bring the yarn through one and two. Now, when you're looking at the instructions, it will say one and two, 
it, it gives each warp a number. You don't necessarily have to worry about that. It's just how, it, how it's explaining. You're going to go through your, get to your, um, do your sumac stitch. So we go through one and two. We go over. I'm going to go over. I'm deciding to go over one, two, and three. And then I'm going to pick up that one, pull it through like so. And what this is going to create is that beautiful plait. Let me go through. So I'm going over one, two, three, and coming around that third one like so. You can see it creates a little step because we've gone around this one creating like a little step there like so but as I say all of these are in the instructions and um, you can just have some fun with it mm, just have definitely. some fun with it and, and as you uh, say if you don't like it you can just unpick that bit yeah unpick that bit pull it out use I would recommend if you were going to undo it perhaps use the shed so that you could open it up and then pull it out a little bit easier um, so so that's that one there that's the large one um, and that's in the millennial colours there. Um, I'm going to go to the your favourite one now. Yes. Is that okay? All right. Indeed, because we've got this hook tantalising me hanging there. It's just yeah, <laughs> so, it's a bit dangerous hanging quite close to you there. So this is what we're aiming for. Don't be daunted because the instructions are so brilliant. When I first got it, I thought, right, well, I can macrame and and I can weave, and I'm adding the two together. Wow, okay, fine, let's go for it. Um, I did, as I say, had to go into my shed and just get the saw out, but that's not obligatory. You don't have to do that to get your piece of wood. You could just use a broom handle if you wanted to. So I'm going to hang it up here. So what I'm going to show you, I just want to show you a couple of the macrame stitches, of knots. I need to have some training with my brain, don't I? It's always about the stitches. Um, I'm going to do some different knots for you, two different knots. And then I'm just going to show you how you would then do your weaving amongst the macrame. Because what we're doing is creating macrame so that you can then weave in and out of it. And that's what creates all the beautiful shapes. And your pattern is, as I say, brilliant. I am a little biased, but we've got the pattern here. So you've got four pages, all step by step, as to how to do each different knot, how to do each different weave. And then you've got this lovely diagram, which really handily breaks all the sections down for you. So it's, it's really nice and easy to follow. So, so you don't have to be able to do macrame to have a go at this? No, because you also get a how to macrame instruction booklet. Um, which takes you from the very beginning of your lark's head knot, which is one that we did before, and it just shows you how to do the lark's head in one hook, in one... Um, if you, sh if you sh lay it flat, oh, you can show it to the overhead camera and then there they we can go. see it. There Brilliant. we go. There you go, that's easier, isn't it? Thank you, Wendy. Um, so you've got the lark's head knot there, showing you how to do that, and that's how you're attaching it to your bit of wood. And then it's showing you how to do a half knot and a square knot. The half knot, if you remember macrame, you know those macrame um, pot hangers, when they're twisted, that's a half knot because you're twisting all the way around. When you're doing a square knot, that's this one here, square knot, it's just a half, it's two of the half knot. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And then it shows you how to do a clove hitch as well, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. And then um, this, you don't necessarily need this bit for the, um, for the project here. So I'm going to show you, and it's always a bit tricky trying to do macrame so that you get a good angle. But I, what I've done is I'm doing a clove hitch and that's what's creating, I just turn it like that, that's what's creating these lovely sections here. So I'm gonna have a lovely section here. You can see I've already started on a little bit of weaving. I'm going to have a lovely section here to do some weaving in. I've got this textured section here, which has been created by a space that I've made by creating, uh, we've done some square knots at the top, and then we've got a, a row of clove hitch going underneath it, and all the instructions tell you exactly where to go, what rope. Again, with the, like with your warp um, ropes, you've got each, each of the cords here is numbered, so it's really easy to know which ones you're making knots with. I'm going to show you how to do a clove hitch. With the clove hitch, the most important thing 
is your guide rope here. You have to keep this taut, otherwise your knot won't work. So I've got my guide rope here, and this also guides, it's called a guide rope because it's guiding the direction of how I want my knots to go. Can you see, I've got this lovely, look, it starts under here, move that out of the way, and it's going, it's kind of looped down a little bit, and it's coming up. I'm not going to come and meet this bit, but I just want it to come here. So this is how you direct where, you, where these lines are. So with a clove hitch, you use your guide rope, nice and taut, your next rope, we're going to do two knots with each rope. The rope goes over, under the guide rope, and through the loop that you make there. So we then pull it nice and tight. And it makes sort of a little ring around your guide rope. So we go over, and then we go through the loop that you've made. There we go, like that. And then you push them up. Push them up, tighten them up, Make sure they're nice and tight and then we move on to the next one. So it's two on each. We have to make two knots with each rope to create the clove hitch. So we'll pull that through like so. And then we do it one more time. All the time, keeping this quite taut and making sure that it is nice and tight. I think the angle that I'm doing this at it's not really helping my knots, but you get the idea and you can see how that's really quite easy. It's one of the easiest ones. Some of the stitches with, uh, some of the knots with macrame, first you might think, oh my goodness, and then you get into some kind of trance. It's just lovely. Um, and you just carry on. So that is how we do a clove hitch. There we go, moving that up. And I've got my last one here because what I want to show you, just whilst I finish this one, what I want to show you is just a little bit of how I would then go about weaving in that section. So there we go, I've done my last clove hitch there. Make sure that's nice and tight. Pull it up, there we go. With this one, you don't get, don't be disappointed, but with this kit, you don't get one of the lovely wooden needles. And the reason for that is that this plastic, I know we might not necessarily like the plastic, but you can certainly reuse it. It's much better for weaving in and out of these ropes. It's, um, if you had a wooden one, you would probably catch on your ropes. You need the flexibility that this plastic um, needle gives you. So as you can see, I've just started here. Now what I would recommend is starting on, the very, on, your, on your lowest point because we don't want to start kind of halfway up and think, oh, well, I, I need to, you know, trying to push your stitches down. So start at the lowest point, fill the lowest point, and then build, and then come up. So when I say build it up, what I mean is start weaving into the next. So I've only gone to here. So next time I'm going to go all the way around this stitch, uh, this stitch is me, my stitch, <laughs> this warp, there we go. So I'm going to go all the way into that corner there all the way into the corner there and pull that through. So exactly like I was doing with the warp and weft on the looms, I'm just going in and out, in and out. And with the textured one, the textured section here, I then just gave myself a bit more slack so that I could pull the yarn out. This one is just going to be straight, a straight weave in and out, in and out. You can see that there. So that is, that's that one. So that's your sections. Don't be, as I said, don't be um, daunted by the, um, by the different sections. It, the, the instructions, I can't stress enough how good the instructions are. They, they just, you feel like they're just, you've got a, a little, you know, a little Pretty tutor person. in, yeah, <laughs> a tutor by your side helping you out. So it's really good. One more thing I want to show you, and I think if you watch the macrame, show that I did a couple of um, good few weeks ago now you'll probably know this one but I just want to show you over here that square knot the square knot is the one where it looks like a number four we look like we're making a number four so it, it's always using four chords so there's my four chords there that I'm going to use for this one and I'm going to make what looks like the number four and then oh this one wants to get involved we don't want that one involved make the number four and then this fourth one comes over the top of the four and through the gap that you've made and then you maneuver it up 
they go around. So the two outer chords are going around the two inner chords. And then we make a back a number four like that. And we pull it up tight. And that's how you make the square knot. And the, as I say, the instructions will then have the chords all numbered for you so that you know exactly which chords you're making a square knot with. So we go to the end with this one. We make the number four. We go over the top, through the hole, and you. It's a bit wayward, isn't it? It likes to move around this. Uh, bit well, it's of because wood. you're actually trying to do it at a very yeah. strange angle. <laughs> and there we go. There we go. Just to finish off that square knot there. And with this one, just like at the top, we've made some square knots here. So I've got a got one, two, three, four square knots. And then what you do is you take, can you see you join there? So I've got two up here, but then I'm using two from each of those to create some knots underneath. And that's what gives it this beautiful texture here. So if I get the other one down for you, I think you can see. Can I get this one down? I haven't added it. There we go. So here you can clearly see all your sections and the beautiful um, weaving here. And that's the section I've just worked on there. So you can, if I turn it around, that's that section I've just been working. So there's the, there's the weaving. That's what mine will hopefully look something like. And then here are the square knots. And then as you add your beads, you then do another line of clove hitch underneath, another section. But again, it's all in the instructions and, and all the instructions are done in sections for you. So really simple, to be honest, really simple. But if you want to give yourself a bit of a challenge as well, something quite interesting, this, I think this is the kit for you. So really. do, do you have to have it hanging or can you do it flat on the table? You do need to have it do hanging. Have, but when you I'm use a hanger, can't you? You can do, yeah, absolutely. When I'm at home, I would have this, I would have a piece of cord and I attach it to my curtain rail. And then I have a, the, this um, S hook, which you get, I would attach that and then so it's, it's, it's really low maintenance in terms of the amount of equipment that you need. Don't be, don't be thinking, oh gosh, I could never use that setup. Just, you know, you've, you've got the hook in here. Yeah, exactly. Yes. It's not, yes, it depends what piece, of, if you're going to use a rather heavy piece of driftwood, then you, you might not put that on your curtain rail um, because, well, my husband will certainly have something to say about it, but, um, but it's, you know, it's no great weight that you're hanging off it, so you don't need to worry about that. So, yeah, I hope that's inspired. Um, some, it really has. Yeah, it does. And, and you can start it and leave it and come back and do it another day as well. Yeah, absolutely. I had mine, um, this one I started and I did all of the, so you cut all your cords to size and I did all of the lark's head knots first and then I had to go make some supper or something and then just went back to it. Um, but because you've got those sections so clearly written down in your instructions, it's really easy to know where you are. You don't have to be thinking and, you know, second guessing yourself and thinking what, what, what part was I on? So, and, and you know what you could also do if you wanted to, you could change the colors, change them up. If you're not, if you, you know, you like this lovely color, but actually lilac is more your color. Well, put the lilac section here and have the blue here, for instance. You can do whatever you want to with this. And I think that they are just so pretty. When you get to the end, we've created this fringing just by undoing the cords. So it's nothing special. We just, you would just take the cord and just untwist it. And that become, then becomes your fringing and your, um, yeah, your fringing at the end. There's no need, you're not adding all of these tassels. You're just creating the fringing like that. So there oh, it's we go. really lovely, absolutely fantastic. Um, I was going to say that the, I, I think the steps that we've done them in are probably, you know, the smaller one for yes. the, you know, for perhaps a, more of a beginner, the larger one, if you think I, 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 I've done a bit of weaving, I want to have a bit more yes. challenge, that one. And then this one, if you love macrame, like I do, I've just become addicted to macrame. My sister-in-law was joking, saying, You're, we're going to all get macrame gifts now, aren't we? I can tell <laughs> that's what's going to come at Christmas. And I'm like, mm, maybe. So, um, so those are the kind of steps, but don't be daunted. If you, if you love this, but you haven't really done very much weaving before, 
I would just go for it. Just yes. be brave and go for it. Because there's no right or wrong, really, exactly. is there? Exactly. Exactly. And, and yeah, the instructions are lovely. And everything is such a beautiful quality as well. The cord, I mean, I talked about this when I was on the Macrame show. The, the cord, you know, it's, it's rope, essentially. We called it rope earlier, didn't we? But it's really soft. Beautiful, it's 100% it? cotton, really soft, well, really durable. Thank you so much for that. Not That's at all. really lovely. It's been great. And thank you, you know, for giving us our introduction to weaving. You're very welcome. So just to quickly recap, because we're going to run out of time very, very quickly. Uh, the first small kit, this is the Ocean. This has been the most popular one. This is the one that Carrie started with. So you get everything that you need, including the instructions, the lovely wooden needle, the shed, etc. And the instructions are a guide. They're not a pattern. They're just showing you how to, how to set it all up, how to start weaving, and then how to get it all off. You create your own design, or you can follow this if you wish. Then we have the other small one, which is the Calm. So again, got these lovely colours. So this is if you want to work with these sort of more pinks and softs here. This is Calm. Everything else has got the same, all the same bits and pieces in there. Beautifully, beautiful quality, beautifully packaged. Then we have the large weaving loom so this is the same idea as the two small ones but it's larger so the first step is to put it together because obviously it's larger than the box but again you get all of the yarns you get that lovely big needle that Carrie was using etc so it's all in there including the instructions but the instructions are how to get weaving not a pattern so you create this as you wish to and do put it on the fans page when you've done it because we would like to see this. And then this is the one that we've finally been looking at, which is the macrame weave. So it's a bit of a combination between weaving and macrame. So this is your time to have a go at either. So again, you get everything that you need, including the S hook that you can dangle from your curtain pole. So thank you so much. Do get home, get these started. Have a look on the website if you haven't already done so check out um this is yarn lane and it's back tomorrow with john and we've got 24 percent off because it's the 24th on all sorts of different things but for now grab these kits except leave one macrame one for me okay do we know when you're back again curry uh in a couple of weeks couple of weeks time so i think calling things stitches will be perfectly fine again <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It's been really, really lovely it's to have you with me. Know. So thank you very much. And um, I am back in a couple of weeks time on Thursday and the Friday. So John Scott will be with you from 8am tomorrow. So until later. Bye. <laughs>